you're pretty bullish, 12-month target 450, but you say you think it's more important to get it right than get it done fast. So what are your expectations today? Yeah, I think just like Elon laid out, Dennis Muhlenberg is going to say the same things he's been saying. They deeply regret the incidents that's happened, and I'm sure they do. And they're working to get it right, but they're close. Uh, you know, they have nearly 150 test flights. They are working to get the system right. And uh, you know, they're going to face criticism from shareholders today, rightly so, because uh, stock is down and, and this happened under his watch. But you know, as an analyst, we're looking for the future, and the future for Boeing is going to be fine as long as they get this right. But, the, I mean, the latest information is troubling on that front, Jim. These, these new warnings that allegedly Boeing wasn't that straightforward with regulators and with airlines about the safety features. Do you expect that to have new ramifications for Boeing from the regulators? Well, it's my view that they're not going to lose a single order as a result of this. Um, certainly, regulated, regulatory scrutiny is going to be increased, and I think that's correct, especially in the, in the wake of two crashes. There should be strong scrutiny from the FAA and other authorities. And that's going to, when the plane does come back into service, it's going to have customers feeling more confident because there's more regulatory scrutiny rather than less. So I think that's a good thing. In terms of the Wall Street Journal article, to the extent that Southwest didn't know, uh, I think it would be more like an oversight or a mistake rather than intentional mistake. Leading, how can you sell an upgrade package if you haven't informed your customer that that product is not even in there? Well, whether it's intentional or an oversight, um, I mean, what happens to the relationship between Southwest and Boeing? Can you can you envision a scenario where they even start to hedge their bets with a competing uh, manufacturer? I think to the extent that conversations are being had by Southwest, by other airlines around the world, what they're looking for is to get some kind of financial concessions from Boeing, get the plane a little bit cheaper, and I think they will. Uh, I don't think Southwest, who has flown the 737 for its entire history, is looking to go and, and take on a different model type now. I think that they're, 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 uh, they're rightly so unhappy with the lack of information, but uh, nothing happened under Southwest's uh, watch, fortunately, and the plane is going to have those sensors and that upgrade package now for everyone. Jim, how do you factor in consumer attitudes toward Boeing right now and, and some of the uphill climb they're going to have to do, Boeing and the airlines, to win back consumer trust? Yeah, that's why I say it's so crucial that the company get it right. This is their last chance to get customers back on board, passengers back on board. And once the planes start flying, you know, with the way that the industry is, particularly in the U.S., customers don't have a lot of choices. If United is flying a 737 to Miami and you're going to Miami, you're flying on that 737 MAX. You really don't have a lot of choices, even though United has said they're going to work to accommodate customers that are afraid. What they're going to do is they're going to pound the table and say these planes are safe. And I believe they will be safe. But in terms of getting passengers confidence, it's just going to take a little bit of time. But passengers don't have a lot of choices. How safe is Muhlenberg's tenure? I think it's safe right now. As long as they reintroduce this plane properly, uh, there's no further safety incidents. There's no further uh, news that comes out that there was any kind of intentional cover-up or something criminal going on. I think that his tenure is safe. I would love to see an independent chairman of the board. I think that's better corporate governance. But I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Huh. Do you think the independent chair is a likelihood? No, I don't think it's likely. I just think it would be a better corporate governance structure. Uh, I do believe Boeing does have another, a number of independent directors on its board now that can stand up to the chairman, but it's always better if the chairman and the, and the CEO board positions are separated. It's just better corporate governance. Jim, what do you expect to hear today from the company as far as trying to put a number or characterize the legal costs that are facing this company? I doubt very much that they will quantify it. They didn't quantify it at all during the Q1 earnings call that was only just last week. I don't think anything new has happened between now and then. Um, it's going to be a very substantial number, but uh, Boeing, I don't think it's going to quantify it. Finally, uh, Jim, if we, if we manage to clear out uncertainty over the max, uh, where does that leave the company, its valuation, its uh, future expectations relative to the macro, uh, to global growth, and specifically to China trade? Yeah, certainly. I mean, the outlook for commercial aerospace is bright. Boeing is going to be either the number one or number two player in that space. There's only two large manufacturers. We think they're going to capture more than 50 percent of all future orders. Uh, demand for planes is going to double over the next 20 years, and Boeing is going to get their fair share of that. As long as they get this reintroduction of the 737 MAX right, restore faith with their customers and with passengers, they're going to do very well over the next 20 years. And if we, if he gives us a date, if September looks like a, a time where we get these planes in the air once again, how long till the supply chain evens out again? 
I think it's going to be some time. Obviously, when you reduce the supply chain, you reduce the production by 10 planes a month, you can't immediately go back up to, to 52 from 42 again. So it's going to be into next year, I think, before we start seeing these planes fully ramp back up to full production.